Hey everybody, I'm here today to tell you everything that there is to know about the car tachometer. In this video, I'll be going over the basics and fully explaining everything about a car's tachometer. Let's get right into the video. As you can see, this is actually the car's tachometer in this car. In some cars, it's going to be a completely separate gauge, but in this car, it's sort of over here combined with all of the other uh, information that you see right here on the dashboard. And the tachometer is basically numbers that you see, and those numbers represent the RP m's of the engine so let me go over this with you you can see there are numbers here it goes from zero to eight let's start off with that now those numbers represent the rpms of the engine which is the revolutions per minute now if it's go if it if the line is at one that doesn't mean that the engine is uh, you know revolving at one rpm one revolution per minute because if you take a look up here let's see if we can zoom in it says times a thousand r minutes so times a thousand revolutions per minute basically that means that it's revolving a thousand times a minute okay so if you see it at one it doesn't mean one time per minute it means one times a thousand which is one thousand times per minute if it's at two that's two times a thousand which is two thousand times a minute so here's the deal uh when your engine is running and it's idling like it is right now i'm not revving it it's just sitting here it's uh at about 750 rpms okay now if i push the gas pedal and i'm in park with the emergency brake on just in case but if i push the gas pedal you'll see that it's going to go up so when I push the gas pedal, the gas pedal is sending a signal to the engine to rev faster, to spin faster, which will produce more power, okay? So if I rev the engine, as you can see, it goes higher. Right now I'm at about 2,500 RPM, 2,500 revolutions per minute. Now, your RPM... It's basically going to be a mixture between the speed when you're actually driving, because right now I'm in park. But when you're actually driving, it's going to be a, a basically a mixture, a formulaic mixture between the speed that you're traveling, so your actual kilometers per hour or miles per hour, and the gear that you're in, whether it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. I don't know. Cars have a lot of gears nowadays. You have like seven gear cars and so forth. So I'm going to give you a prime example. Let's imagine for a second that we have two cars that are traveling at the same speed. Both cars are going 50 kilometers per hour right beside each other. The car on the left is in second gear. The car on the right is in third gear. So they're both going 50. The car on the left is in second. The car on the right is in third. The car on the left, and let's assume they're the same car. The car on the left will be revving higher, okay? Because it's in a lower gear. So if you're going the same speed, okay, but you're in a lower gear, your RPMs will be higher. Okay, Does, hopefully that makes sense. Sort of like a bicycle, how it works. And the car on the right that's in a higher gear, the one that's in third gear, the RPMs are going to be lower. So basically, um, if you want more power, then you stay in a lower gear because it's going to give you more power, but it's going to limit your top speed. Okay, and this all goes with your RPMs. But if you want less power, but a higher top speed, you're going to move into a higher gear. So although the car on the left will be revving, um, the car on the left will be revving higher because it's in second gear, it's actually going to have a, a more acceleration power, but a lower top speed for second gear. Whereas the car on the right that's in third gear is going to have uh, less acceleration power, but a higher top speed because it's in third. Okay, so uh, when you're learning about the tachometer, what you want to do is just Put it in park, make sure that the emergency brake is on just in case, and just push the gas pedal and experiment. And just see, like I said, listen to how it sounds. I'm revving about 3,000 RPMs right now, and release it. And understand that when you push the gas pedal, it sends a signal to the engine to rev up. There's one last thing that I want to point out about the car tachometer. What do you see right here? Well, obviously you can't answer that right now because you're watching this video uh, you know, partially uh, halfway across the world, probably halfway across the world. This is a red line. And literally that's what it's called. It's called the red line of the car. So whenever you see a red line, that usually indicates the highest RPM that that engine is willing to go to safely. Okay, meaning if I'm driving and I floor it, okay, this engine should rev, because this is an automatic car, this engine should rev up until uh, whatever that is, about 6,500 RPMs, and then it should shift to the next gear. If you're driving a manual car, you're going to have to manually shift it to the next gear and make sure that you shift it before it goes there. 
Now, if you're modifying a car and so forth, obviously you can rev up higher than that, but I'm talking about a stock car. And for the most part, every red line is gonna be different. On my old Civic Si, I had a red line of about 8,000 RPMs, meaning I could bring it all the way up to here without really worrying for the most part. But on this car, it's a CRV. It's not really a sporty car like my old Civic Si was. It's much lower. It's at about 6,500 RPMs. Now, don't redline it all the time because it will negatively affect your engine, but I do recommend redlining it every once in a while for that gas pedal let the engine breathe it's really good for moving parts around in the engine and letting everything breathe properly and that's basically it in this video i've told you about i've told you all about a car tachometer i've told you what the numbers mean the fact that they're times a thousand and the fact that rpms is revolutions per minute along with you know the red line and how it coincides with driving the car and different gears that you might be in i really hope you've enjoyed this video if you liked it be sure to give it a thumbs up let me know what you think down below as a comment and of course be sure to subscribe for more great car and driving videos just like this one and that's all i have for you today thanks for watching